Uh, hi everybody. Uh, just going to uh, record a, uh, another little video I thought about. First I'd like to point out that I've moved rooms in the house since yesterday and uh, the various Betty Boop stuff in the uh, room is the homeowner, homeowners. I think she's cute, but I'm, I'm not that big a fan. <coughs> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and entitle this video um, Living Under Communism. Uh, somebody asked me to do a China video recently, uh, yesterday, and I, I thought that was really kind of interesting because I hadn't thought about it in a while. And um, One thing a lot of my, you know, the people I know tell me when I, when I talk to them about it is, you know, how can you live under communism? Well, and and again, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be uh, talking to you guys really about my own political views per se, but uh, I'm just going to again try and tell things like they are as I observe them. Uh, I'm not a stupid guy. I might not be the uh, sharpest knife in the drawer all the time, but this is kind of how I felt about things while I was there. <coughs> The worst thing about living under communism, uh, for me, was having to go tell the government where I lived every year. That that was the most annoying thing. It was mainly annoying because your work never seems to want to do it on a convenient day for you. And you always have to go, you, know, you used to have to go really far away to do it in Wuhan. They've since changed it. But, for the most part, living under Chinese communism, I did not feel as though my life was impeded in any way. I, I, you know, went to bars, I, uh, you know, stayed out as late as I wanted, I, you know, uh, walked around naked in my apartment with the window open occasionally, uh, you know, mainly because I forgot, but, like, you know, no one cared. Um, you know, I, uh, and, you know, there are a lot of things I, I kind of did that I, I, I'm not even going to mention here. You know, but, you know, suffice it to say, if you want to go there and, and you want to develop, you know, a drinking problem or a drug problem or whatever, you can. I mean, those, those are options. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as, as, a, as a foreigner, at least, they, they don't really like to uh, get in your way too much. Um, mainly dealing with work and, and stuff like that and, and dealing with, you know, the, the bureaucratic side of of getting yourself registered and ready to work in the country is, is really the, the difficult thing. It's not like you just get a job and you start working. There's th That's kind of annoying too. There's a lot of paperwork that goes along with getting a job. Uh, you can't just go there and stay indefinitely, you know, you gotta kinda have a visa. It's, I mean, you could, obviously. Um, people do it all the time in all kinds of countries, but if you want to be legit about things, then you know you kind of have to have a job and a reason to be there. Otherwise, you have to get your tourist visa renewed every uh, you know few months, and that's a trip to Hong Kong every time. So, and they don't necessarily have to renew it either. Uh, you could also go to Vietnam, which is something a lot of people do. Uh, Nam usually will, will let you in uh, right away. They'll give you a visa right at the border, and you could spend some time there while you're getting your Chinese visa together. So uh, you just go to the Chinese consulate there in, in Vietnam near the border, and you know, that's that's a way to you know throw a little vacation in there. Uh, but yeah, you you can travel. You know, it's it's you know, people go to the store, people shop for stuff. You can buy electronics. You know, people love big LCD TVs. You know, there's there's no real sign other other than a few things here and there that communism's afoot. Are you going to see the hammer and sickle in China? Yes, it's, it's several places I saw. Are you going to see, you know, the Chinese flag everywhere? Of course you are. Um, the less you have to deal with the cops, the better. But, you know, Chinese cops, they're, they're not very well paid. So, you know, you, you got to give, give them a break and, and just try and... You know, not really, not really give them a hard time. I guess uh, you know, don't don't be difficult, and, and they won't they won't bother you. Um, <clears throat> don't get involved in things. If uh, you know you see a dead body laying on the street, the guy's the guy's dead. I mean, just uh, just don't get involved in that. If uh, you see the cops, you know, kind of coming down on some people, chances are, you know, they probably they probably have it coming. Um, I've not seen. Uh, 
the, the only the only reason I ever saw any cops be violent to anybody in China uh, that you know I never saw them be violent to uh, a foreigner but the only time I ever saw any police being violent in any way um, well, well two the whole thing in Tibet with the 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 cops you know kicking the crap out of the monks I'm, I'm pretty sure that that might have happened um, and that was uncalled for and very uncool but you know these things do happen sometimes uh, all over the world and uh, the only other time would be in Wuhan when these two Chinese guys tried to um, walk uh, out of a, a Muslim um, barbecue place uh, without paying and they'd eaten a lot like it was like a couple hundred hundred RMB worth of, of stuff you know meat veggies and, you know beer and uh, they just tried to walk off, and, and the, the owners and a few of the patrons kind of stopped them, and there were some cops nearby, and uh, they, they came down on those guys pretty hard. But um, the citizens were also being very disrespectful to the police, which uh, they would probably rather not deal with most of the time. Uh, so, aside from the whole, you know, register where you're living thing, and, you know, the presence of a lot more people it, it's really hard to tell you're even somewhere else sometimes if you're one of those people that likes to stay home um, you can pretty much just buy what you need for your weekend or whatever after work and uh, go in your apartment and literally just never leave it in fact there there are Chinese people that never have to leave their their building their tower you know there's there's all kinds of stuff available in your tower it's not just living. There's restaurants in there that'll make food for you. Uh, there's seamstresses and stuff in the building. You know, there's parking down there. Um, you know, they, there's water available in the building. You know, beer available in the building through various, you know, restaurants and such in, in the facility. So, it's it's not like you you even have to leave the building for the most part. And, and if you do have to leave the building, it's usually just right downstairs. And there's a bunch of food and drinks and stuff right there. Uh, it, it, if China doesn't doesn't turn out to be your thing really, and you know you, you don't turn out to like the whole traveling thing and stuff, um, you can just live that way. That that's kind of how I lived, especially about the last year. I just kind of became a hermit, and and that that is a, that is an all right way to do it because it allows you to save a lot of money, and, and you can come home with more. And for a lot of people, that's kind of the point. But it is kind of hard to save a lot of money to bring home. It, it, that, that is sort of a difficult thing to do. Um, dealing with money is pretty much the same. Um, they, uh, uh, you know, they drive on the same side of the road we do. Uh, you know, traffic's heavy if you're in a big city, and chances are, if you're a foreigner, you're probably in a big city because you need a job. So, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is don't let the fact that a, a country's communist worry you too much. Uh, if something goes down, uh, they'll start getting all the foreigners out of the country anyway, and they'll be fairly quick about it. Um, one thing China is pretty good about is, is, is you know, acting for the good of the country in in a, a situation. Which is odd because you know, when you go to, to meetings at your work and everything, it seems like they're very uh, you know they, they just want to take forever to decide everything. And it's it's a it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of work. Um, the other thing that would let you know that you're in China is uh, is uh, you know uh, the the whole uh, 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 travel aspect of things. There are a lot of trains here and such. Uh, a, a lot more trains than there there were at least in in the U.S. Uh, before I, I I got back. And I, I do have to say that uh, I thought I found traveling there to be quite exhausting. You know, getting on a train for you know who knows how long, and you know hiking, walking, you know whatever. Uh, it's a difficult thing to do. If you're into it, it can be really cool. I went to this. Uh, I, I went to actually Mulan's hometown, which is. Uh, right near Wuhan and, and went to the place where she trained and she lived and stuff like that and that was really cool <clears throat> and my brother got to go to the lake near her place so uh, you know together we got to see it all 
Anyway, uh, the video is long enough. I just wanted to go ahead and add that for you guys. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say goodnight. Bye-bye.